Okay. Another show of hands survey. How many people here consider yourself evangelizers of Jesus Christ? Raise your hand. Uh, a few coming. I'm asking another one of those loaded questions. Like, what does that mean? But let me ask this. Let me ask why do probably most people, and there's an understandable reason, so this is not a put down. Why do most people, Catholics, if they're asked that question, not raise their hand. What's the image we probably have of an evangelizer that may cause some folks to say, oh, I'm not raising my hand because I'm certainly not like that. Who can tell me like one of those images that you think, oh, a lot of people would not like to be thought of. Sure. Yeah, those who ring the doorbell. How many people here want to ring doorbells? You never know. Okay, but somebody kind of being that forward, especially even when you look at the gospel today. What other reasons might people be hesitant to think of themselves as evangelizers? Any other comments? And what's the image that sometimes people get that's kind of like, ooh, I don't want to be that way? Or on TV and, you know, preaching. Yeah, the people on TV preaching and everything. I, 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 you know, asking for money. Yeah, I, I saw one guy that was on a news special. I thought, goodness, uh, he has this church in the South, and he told them that, 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 that God told him that they were to raise money to get a $35 million uh, jet uh, that he would have to be able to go around the world and preach the gospel, and they gave it to him. I thought, I am the wrong religion. <laughs> you know? But yeah, that kind of image, they're in it for themselves. It might be they, they come across uh, kind of heavy. You know, maybe the first thing, as soon as they meet you, they say, have you been saved? Catholics never know what to say to that, you know? So uh, all of that kind of thing. And then we do add to the, uh, uh, the gospel today, because it kind of comes out, well, gee, are we supposed to, like Jesus said, send them out two by two and go to these different towns and go to these different places and knock on doors? Uh, 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 you know, probably what most of us would be hesitant to do that. And is that necessarily the most effective way that we can reach and connect with people? Uh, I know uh, that uh, you may be aware uh, that our parish has an evangelization commission among many different commissions. And I just want to read a couple of the goals, but to make a point around it. In the Evangelization Commission that just started several months ago and is continuing on, a couple goals for this year. Reach out to inactive Catholics, the unchurched, the alienated, and others. And improve the way newcomers are welcomed in the parish. There's some other goals too, but I wanted to read those. And this too, we probably got to watch. Oh, we got an Evangelization Commission. Fine, they do that. I'm glad they're doing it. That's good. I don't have to do it. But our various commissions have emphasized that, uh, yes, they're to get a focus on that, but part of the focus in the Evangelization Commission is to help all of us see how each of us, with our own temperament, with our own life circumstance, how each of us are called to reach out to those that maybe need to know the good news of God's love in Jesus Christ. Maybe need to know there's a parish that, that is very inclusive and loving and that they could come to. Or maybe uh, need to know that there's, there's, there's a, a group that they can connect with if maybe they're going through some hurt or difficulty. And the reality is, all of us are called as church. We've certainly mentioned that, welcoming new people. Do we have a welcoming committee? Yes. But hopefully we're a welcoming community every week, all of us here. If we see somebody we don't know, we've mentioned whether it's a sign of peace or some other time to introduce, to uh, let people know that's, that's our call. Maybe we need to be a little more intentional about it, a little more aware. And usually people, uh, especially newcomers or, 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 or people that are unsure of faith and whether Jesus could possibly love them, I've heard many, many times when somebody reaches out to them with God's goodness and love and guidance, they appreciate it. You've heard me, I've mentioned it many times, I wouldn't be a Catholic today if two people had not invited me to church and got over being reticent, oh, I don't know if I want to invite him because that may be an imposition, he's going to think we're religious fanatics, of course we're asking him, no, and that was in my high school senior year. But I do want to share a, a, a few examples of, 
of what this is all about. And the reality is, as we heard in St. Paul's rather lengthy letter in the second reading, that we've all been chosen. We've been chosen by God to be his beloved, and we've been chosen as his beloved to help others know that God loves them too and wants to touch their lives and wants to be a source of hope and, and peace and comfort and at times challenge, as uh, Amos did in that first reading. But, but, but God desires to be in relationship with us. Three very quick examples, and I'm using them because sometimes we need practical kind of illustrations of what does that look like? How does that happen for us as Catholic Christians? One, I know a fellow uh, here in the parish a few months back uh, told me how he was uh, talking with a couple of, there was a bunch of buddies that get together from uh, different churches and they know each other and they've known each other for years. And this fellow was sharing uh, that uh, one of his buddies at another parish uh, found out wasn't going to church anymore. He had a bad experience in that parish and he just turned it all off. We probably all know people like that. And, uh, and uh, the fellow talking to me thought, well, should I say anything? Because, again, we're kind of hesitant. But he kind of, oh, maybe I should at least say something. Not be preachy, well, you know, you ought to get back to church. You know, but rather uh, point out, and he did. He pointed out, he said, well, you know, the church I go to, and, and there's other churches, too, that are very positive and loving. If you've gone to a church that's turned you off or, 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 or been negative or hurt you in some way, go elsewhere. That's the good of the Catholic Church. And of course, this fellow shared with me, he was kind of excited to say he invited this fellow to our parish, and the guy's been coming ever since. And, and just a beautiful example, and he felt good because he said, you know, when the fellow was talking, he kept thinking, I should ask him, I should ask, oh, no, I shouldn't, no, I shouldn't, I should ask, no, I shouldn't. You know, and finally, he, yeah, just ask ask and say, hey, we got something good here. And he shared. He shared that, gosh, he knew of that negativity. He had some of that in his past. But he talked about this parish being something positive and loving. And many other parishes more like that, too. Just giving that witness. Here's another circumstance. Uh, I know so many of us, and, and rightfully so, uh, a real concern around the whole abortion issue. And here was a woman who's been very pro-life. She wasn't from this parish. And she had an interesting encounter that took her in a whole other direction. She strongly and lovingly uh, ha ha has spoken out uh, against abortion. So at work, uh, you know, where she worked with a lot of people, a woman came to her and said, I had an abortion, and I feel awful, you know, and, uh, and I thought it was right at the time, and I'm feeling terrible. And for this woman, as she, as she shared with me, she said, wow, I never had that. I was always on the, before they make the decision, I want to encourage them to have the baby. Here was this woman, she was broken, she was hurting, she was guilt-ridden. And the woman shared with me and said, she told her uh, workmate there, hey, you did it? Yes. You see it's wrong? It was wrong. The Lord can forgive you. The Lord can forgive you. And she mentioned about even going to confession. She also mentioned that Catholic Charities had kind of a healing retreat for those who've had abortion. And, and, and this woman said, wow, you know, I, 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 I felt good about that. Because that's part of it. Part of it is the good news of God's mercy. Not okaying abortion, but saying... The wrongness there, but the Lord can be there and help you. He can uplift your guilt um, and, and, and help you to go forward. And of course, she said that that really helped this particular woman. Sharing God's mercy. Goodness knows a lot of people need to know that because lots of people are holding on to guilt about a lot of stuff, you know, and think the last place I'm going to come is the Catholic Church. You know, the roof will fall in or whatever. It's a high roof. But to know, hey, no, you can come. You can be forgiven. And uh, uh, just one final example I want to use of this. This was in another parish, very struck when I was involved in the RCI, another parish, that uh, a whole family came in. Whole family, parents and a couple kids that were like grade school age, uh, came into the RCA. Why did they come? Because their neighbors, who were Catholic, and this, this 
the family really had not practiced any kind of faith, but their neighbors who were Catholic, they'd socialize at different times and had, you know, and their kids were around the same age. And just one time when they were having a neighborhood get together, uh, that other family said, gee, uh, you know, not in any judgmental tone or anything like that. Uh, hey, uh, would you ever like to connect with a church? And even they were a little hesitant doing it, you know, not wanting to impose, not wanting to feel like our parents, our Catholic faith is better, uh, but they could see, you know, hey, this family was out there. They didn't go to church, and so they just said something lovingly. And the other family responded immediately, thank you. We know you go to church. We thought about talking to you about it, but we didn't want to impose on you. Wow. Breaking that reticence and, and bringing them together. Those are just three examples. But the point is, every one of us are called to be evangelizers in our own Catholic Christian way with our own temperament. Letting people see, however we share it, whenever it comes up, the good news of God's love in Jesus Christ. And saying, hey, this is what it means to me. And I know some people say, well, I'm not that perfect a Catholic, so I can't be talking to other people about it. Well, you can even say that. The good thing is the Catholic Church welcomes imperfect people. It has for 2,000 years and will continue to do so. That's a hope also. So there's a way we can convey that even with our flaws. So think about that. Next few weeks, we're going to be talking about the RCIA with people maybe wanting to look into the faith. We're going to be talking about a program called Christ Life, all about deepening our experience of Jesus Christ in our daily life. All wonderful opportunities. But even beyond that, it's not just selling a program. It's letting them know through our own example that sense that there's a God who loved us enough to send his son Jesus to give his life to be resurrected from the dead, to touch us with his spirit, and to let us know God's love is forever and can forgive anything and everything. That's the good news. Evangelize means share the good news. It doesn't get any better than that. To believe it for ourselves and to pass it on. God bless you.